Hello, hello, and welcome to my next adventure. Um, apparently sewing is now an adventure. Well, I guess it is sort of an adventure. In today's video, I will be attempting to make my own camping quilt. There aren't very many videos about making your own quilt on YouTube, so uh, there are a few reasons that I wanted to make this video myself. The first reason is because I wanted to show how a slightly different design comes out because so far I've only seen people using the caro step baffle technique, but I personally don't really like the idea of down moving around a lot in the quilt. I'd rather just make it so that it is more insulated in the places that need more insulation right off the bat. Which brings me to the second reason. I wanted to share some of the things I've learned online about making a quilt specifically quilt or sleeping bag specifically for women so women generally will need a bit more insulation around the hips and around the feet which uh, makes sense because when I sleep in my current sleeping bag which is too cold for me which is why I'm making a quilt and I'm also pretty convinced now it is actually a men's sleeping bag my feet and my ass get cold. The final reason I'm making this video is also a bit of a disclaimer. Uh, I am a beginner. I haven't actually sewn anything before. So I thought by filming this video that I might be able to show uh, what another average person might expect um, in their experience of making this by themselves and uh, how it might differ to the people on YouTube who are more of an expert in making this and have shared how they do it. So with that being said, please watch other videos on YouTube. I will leave some links in the description down below of what I have watched and some other websites I've looked at. But maybe this video can give you a little bit of extra information to consider. So the dimensions I will be using, uh, this page is actually a bit of a mess, but basically the circumference around my shoulders is 105 centimeters. So according to the Tia Gear Tasmania website, Website, you should take your shoulder circumference and add 15 to 20 centimeters to your quilt width up the top. So I'm making it 125 centimeters wide and I'm adding two centimeters on each side for a seam allowance, which is more seam allowance than other people seem to add, but I figured since I haven't sewn before, it might be safer for me to add just a little bit more. I will begin my foot box taper a third of the way down, and I will be tapering to 95 centimeters. Although actually, since drawing out my stencil, it seems to have gone to about uh, 90 centimeters. So, Hopefully that won't be too much of an issue. The other quilts I've seen, people seem to have been making the foot box smaller than 95 centimeters anyway. So hopefully that'll be okay. Another thing with my quilt is that I don't want it to be fully sewn um, on the bottom third. I would like it to be zippable so that I can unzip it and use it like a normal blanket if I would so wish to, which I think I will want to. So I have added a little semicircle down the bottom because I think that that would help with keeping my feet insulated if I can like have that where the drawstring kind of is. Um, I guess we'll see how that works out. Now I am 163 centimeters tall and online they said to add about 20 centimeters to your height so that you definitely have enough room for your whole body and you can like put your face under if it's really cold. Uh, so I'm making it 183 centimeters in height, which is exactly six feet. A video I watched on YouTube um, said specifically not to stick this down on carpet, but I do not have anything other than carpet in this house. Um, so I guess that is what I'm using. <laughs> I've got the stencil drawn on here. Um, you probably can't see it very well because it's white on orange. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna have 14 baffles and I'm making them continuous baffles because uh, that will be easiest to sew, I believe. Drawing this all out on here took much longer than I expected it to. It took an hour and a half. For me, I don't know if it's quicker for people who have done this many times before. So I've got 350 grams of 850 fill power down. So according to some of the quilt designs I found online for women, that seems like it will make a negative five Celsius quilt. So according to a table I found online, I should be cutting baffles that are two inches to two and a half inches wide. So I will be doing that as well. Now I'm going to cut everything out. 
and then I will share my calculations on how much down I'm going to put in each baffle. I would also like to take this chance to give you a little cautionary tale. Do not attempt to use a toy sewing machine for this. You're welcome. <laughs> so now instead of a baby sewing machine, I'm using an adult sewing machine. I borrowed this from a friend of a friend who I met uh, on maybe two occasions. So I'm really lucky that she actually let me borrow it and it looks pretty solid. I have sewed one side of all of the baffle walls on. And now I'm going to sew the second side of all of them. Then there won't be too much left to do. So now I've got all the baffle walls sewn in. You can see the little mesh bits there. And now I'm gonna work on the uh, attachments. So I got these materials from someone who makes quilts but also happens to sell the fabric themselves. And uh, they just sent me an assortment of things that they felt would give me enough for what I would need for my quilt. So I'm just gonna be using stuff out of this. I think this is called shock cord. So I'm going to start with this to make drawstrings, one at the bottom and one at the top. So I do not have any specialist equipment for putting in little uh, circles or openings of any kind. So I'm just gonna be putting it through the hem or seam. I'm not really sure which word is correct here and just put it through there. I got a bunch of these little things in my kit and this looks like something that I should use for this little cord. So I'm going to thread it through here now and then try to figure out how to tie it in a way that makes it not um, piss off. Yep, so this is what I've got and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and cut it to be an appropriate length. So now I've got this sort of situation. Just Next is this piece of elastic that I'm gonna be using around my sleeping pad. And then I've got these clips to put onto the elastic before I sew it together. I also only just realized that the male end of the clip is the only one that has that sort of double hole there for the elastic and for it to be able to be moved without it um, being loose. And the other end is clearly meant to just stay in one place and be sewed onto something that isn't supposed to be adjustable. So I will be putting just the male end on all of the elastic parts. The zip works. I was definitely most worried about this part because I felt like it was the easiest to uh, muck up, but it seems to work at the moment. Final accessories uh, is gonna be this ribbon attached to the female end of the clips I was putting on around the mat before. Uh, and then also an extra one up the top for where the drawstring is around the neck. In one video I saw, uh, they said to attach the clips at uh, one fifth down the bag and two fifths down the bag. So I think I will do it at the third baffle line and the sixth baffle line. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Um, because 14 is very close to 15. It is almost done. Um, so now I basically just need to go around the edges 
and put down in. This side is a bit more aligned than the other one, so I think I'll leave it as the last one to do. I'll go around the top, the other side, and the bottom now, um, and then I will fill it. the side went very smoothly um, and then I got to the bottom and I don't really know what happened here <laughs> oh man I couldn't like go round very well but you know what it'll be it'll be fine it's still it's still gonna work it just doesn't look very pretty and I missed the um like the frayed edge kind of bit um, in one little part here, but I think I'll need to fix that when I get back from my next trip because I'm going tomorrow, so I need to finish this ASAP. And I was planning to have this drawstring inside. It's on the inside and the straight bits, but then I realized that I would have to have some sort of hole. It would have had to go all the way around the circle, which I didn't really want. And so the bottom is now quite the hot mess, but, um, it will still work. So I did some calculations beforehand of how much down to put in each baffle so that it's more insulated at the hips and at the feet uh, because that is what women's sleeping bags generally have. So if you're interested in my exact figures, you can pause on this table. The surface area of each baffle that I used is in decimeters squared, not centimeters squared, because it just gave me a neater number. So I thought I would use that. <laughs> and when I was talking to the guy who makes quilts, who sold me this stuff, he said that it would be easier to work with the down if I push it into a tube when I'm measuring it out. So I've stuck together two toilet paper rolls and hopefully this tube is big enough to fit 25 grams of down, because that's about the average of what I'm gonna be using. And if not, then, Let's just improvise. I am definitely a bit worried about this flying out everywhere. <laughs> oh, no, this is bad. No. Nah. No, 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 no. This is not gonna work. No. Mm-mm. Absolutely not. Ah! This expensive ass down is going everywhere. Okay. Let me find a much larger container. I shouldn't have ever thought for even a second that would work. If this might be in the right shape. This is only two grams? No, it's not. Okay, that is seven grams apparently. Wow, this is much more spacious than I thought it was gonna be. This is nine grams. I hate this. I feel like I'm losing money. <laughs> there does not seem to be a way in which I'm going to be able to just tip it in. So I might as well get a very large container. Also, I just realized that this scale does not actually measure half grams. It's fine. It's fine. Everything is fine. Okay, here we go. Thank you. 
That is five grams. No way, that's so much. The long YouTube video I saw about doing this, this guy was doing it over the bathtub, but I don't really trust our bathtub to be um, clean enough. And yeah, so I'm just gonna pick it up off the floor. I feel like that would be cleaner than the bathtub. <laughs> I'm actually not even being sarcastic. Also, I don't really like bathtubs personally. Baffle number two. I feel like I'm taking down out of this bag and the amount of down in this bag stays the same, but then all this down just appears in front of me. Okay, this says it's 25 grams. So that looks the same as the 16 grams. <laughs> I don't understand down. <laughs> this is so weird. All right, you can you go in here. Mm, yes. God, I actually feel like I'm touching like a fluffy pet. Down feels very nice. You know what? I understand why people did that caro step baffle now. I'm gonna fill the rest of these now off camera. I also have never used a quilt before. I've only ever used a sleeping bag. So this was actually kind of a risky project. <laughs> ah, I am an orange caterpillar. <laughs> I already feel a bit hot, actually. I can't believe I made this. I've literally never sewed anything in my life and I just made this. I am leaving tomorrow morning to go on a bikepacking trip for a week. I made this over four days, which is also kind of insane. I will test this out in the coming week. I will leave a little review of how I feel that this quilt kept me warm. This is definitely as warm. I was expecting it to be warmer, but I'm not completely sure yet whether that is the case, but it is significantly lighter, like 750 grams lighter. It's been two months, I have new hair and I just got a mic for recording outdoors. Um, I don't know if the audio quality is actually any better, but hopefully it'll help in windy circumstances. It is not windy in my room, however, so I cannot test that out in particular. I have tested out the quilt in late autumn here in Melbourne and I realized that actually there is definitely space for more down and that it's not like turgid enough. Is that the right word? Basically, I saw a couple of other people in the last camp I went on, which is Biritmo, which might take a couple of months to come out. They had down quilts and it looked more like full than mine. So I think that maybe it just isn't like full enough because it definitely wasn't as warm as I expected. Uh, it's a bit warmer than the previous sleeping bag I had, but maybe only like two degrees warmer. And I was hoping to be able to sleep with this at zero degrees Celsius uh, without any extra layers of, you know, a liner or an emergency blanket. So I ordered a hundred grams more down and I'm going to be opening up the last seam, which was on this side. Um, individually for each baffle and stuffing in a few extra grams in each baffle um, and then hand sewing it closed because the sewing machine I was using wasn't mine and I don't want to borrow it again for a relatively small task. I did two yesterday and they each took me about 25 minutes. It'll probably take me a bit less than six hours. <laughs> But that's okay, you know, because I'm mentally tired today and I think it would be good for me to have a large chunk of time where I have to do something with my hands. Listen, this week has been a hell of a week, but I don't think this channel is the right place for me to get into it. Anyway, I guess let's get started.
is the probably finished quilt. Mostly finished. I still have this little bag of down which now has a hole in it, so I'm gonna have to do something about that. So I imagine on the next trip I take, I will see if there are any spots that I think are a bit cold and put some more down in there. Although I did recently also learn a bit more about like loft and baffle width or depth or whatever. And I realized that actually to make the area around the hips warmer, it's not so much putting more down in there, although you will need to do that as well, but also just actually making the baffle walls thicker. So, you know, if there's two inches of loft in other places, they may be doing two and a half in that area, but I can't really undo that at the moment. <laughs> so keep in mind, if you're trying to make a specific part warmer, for example, your hips or your feet, if you're a woman, then you're going to want to cut a wider baffle wall for those areas. I hope you enjoyed this video and or found it helpful. I will hope to upload a video in about two weeks and that will be about my fat bike and the adventures I have taken it on and my impression of the first few months of riding a fat bike. So if you're interested in that, definitely subscribe and hit the bell so you find out when that video drops. Or you can follow me on Instagram to find more updates about videos and extra photos and stuff from the trips I've been on. Um, I also post a little bit about my music. See you on my next adventure.